Today, I'm gonna to go over some updates to the knee and just other updates in general. It's been several days since I made that kind of Saucony video where I'm thinking that that hint of stability isn't quite agreeing with my like running form, my gait, and my just running style. And uh, there's definitely been some improvements, uh, but it's not as fast as I was hoping. And so uh, I was really hoping that like, you know, previously I had run in on shoes before, the ones with the clouds, and that shoe gave me some problems in my left side, like right above the knee, right on the outer side and uh like in the like kind of like the upper outer corner of it and like i stopped running in that shoe for like two days and it just vanished the pain went away and i never saw it again uh so i was kind of hoping for something similar here that isn't quite what's happened i run in the Cl the hoka clifton 7 and then i ran a day in the ultra superior then a day in the hyperion tempo and then again in the Clifton 7, which is the footage you just saw. So it's been four runs. And uh, in each of those runs, I was able to make it through the run without any pain. But towards the end of them, I am kind of still like feeling the knee a little bit, today being the best day. So um, I'm hoping that just continued time away from the sock and knees for a little bit is going to help. It's gonna be a little bit difficult because I just got this as well. It's the endorphin shift, which is something that I've been looking forward to for quite a bit, just very curious about where this shoe fits in the lineup, what it means. Uh, is it just like a third shoe in the lineup for the sake of having a third shoe? Or does it serve like a different purpose overall in the broader socketing lineup? So lots of questions that you guys have been asking and then I've been very curious about. But taking a look at the shoe, I got it yesterday and it definitely has kind of like that highlighted area that Saucony tells you about when it has this head disability in the shoes. And it even rolls up into the uh, medial side here and feeling it, it's just like very stiff rubber in here. So it just feels like there's a stability insert in this shoe right at that part where I'm worried about Saucony shoes. So I think I'll still run it. I'm very much looking forward to it. Hopefully it's not even an issue at all, but um, you know, I think I'm just gonna be cautious about it. So it might be like another week before I get back to it. I'm lo really looking forward to it and already missing the Riot 13 and the Triumph 18. But I think that the overall plan will be once the knee kind of feels normal again, uh, I could sprinkle those shoes in every once in a while um, just to enjoy those shoes because I do like them a lot, but to not like overdo it and overload with those shoes at least that's the working hypothesis now in addition to that i have been doing kind of my normal uh body weight um or no not weight but like body weight only uh leg strength routine so hopefully strengthening some of like the ancillary muscles around the knee and in the hips uh, will also help with some of what i think is probably the sock and issues exacerbating an existing gait problem maybe it's a gait problem that never would have become symptomatic had it not been for the socking issues, but in either event, it's highlighting some areas that I think could use some tweaking. Normally, I try not to worry about gait too much. I try not to worry about cadence, um, foot strike all that much, but it seems to be causing me an issue now, so I feel like I need to take a little bit of a look at it. You know, I've been telling you guys for years, like when it comes to a shoe, like this is the area where I get a lot of wear, and you know, I've seen my own foot strike you know, thousands of time and I, I do see that I do a little bit of heel breaking in terms of my stride uh, at times. And so uh, one of the things I've been doing for the past, you know, several runs is to shorten up the stride a little bit. It feels like I'm running choppy, but I'm ultimately just trying to make sure that my foot is striking directly underneath me and I'm not reaching out uh, as much. I'm also just trying to make sure I'm picking up my arms a little bit higher. I tend to run with my arms really low and I have a feeling that I was always a low arm swinger 
but I also think that carrying the camera, um, it's just to counterbalance myself. I think I'm keeping my arm really low. So it's so another thing that I'm working on is to try to just make sure that like, you know, being more mindful of my run, not trying to change a lot of mechanics too much, but um, just trying to be mindful of like being a little bit more efficient and a little bit more balanced. So the other thing is in paying attention again to uh, nutrition and sleep uh, as ways to just first recover from kind of the pain and the issue that I have now, uh, as I'm also looking to build strength and kind of rehabilitate. So those are kind of the things that I'm going for now. I'm kind of giving up on like the telemedicine idea uh, for having someone to take a look at my knee. I really think that I need to get someone, you know, to, to get hands on it. But uh, that's pretty elective in my opinion at this point, and I'm just gonna avoid it for now. Uh, Dubuque County, where we are, being listed by the White House as a red zone uh, in terms of uh, virus incidents. So I'm trying to stay away from places to the extent that I can. I did have to go to a lot of places the past couple of days trying to help my brother-in-law, um, but a uh, risk I, I was very willing to take um, going to see a physical therapist. Uh, maybe not that risky at all, maybe it isn't, um, but I think that that can certainly wait. I'll do, I guess, what are considered some more conservative measures, still not like super amping up the mileage. I feel like I can increase it a little bit because I'm feeling confident, but we'll you know, kind of take everything slowly. I was hoping by now to be kind of like starting to get ready for the next thing that I wanted to look forward to, which would have been to uh, set up like a, a full on training block for like a 5K and a 10K. And um, I think I'm just gonna keep waiting on that for a little while longer. Um, maybe give it another week of uh, slowly increasing up my mileage, slowly increasing up like little bursts of intensity, just kind of testing things out, seeing how I'm feeling. And we'll kind of adjust and play it by ear. Uh, see how things are going. If it gets worse, we'll dial it back. If it gets better, I'll continue to kind of like, you know, keep testing and pushing. So that's kind of the status of the knee. Just want to give you guys a quick update. In uh, other uh, updates as well, a lot of you guys have been uh, giving me well wishes and um, sending your thoughts over to my brother-in-law and uh, his family over in Cedar Rapids, and they're doing fine. Uh, we Yesterday, we heard that initially it was going to be five to 10 days before they got power. Um, now the current update is going to be several weeks before they get power back. So uh, we had yesterday decided to uh, figure out, was it yesterday? No, two days ago, um, we went down and got them a generator so that way uh, they could at least have some sort of electricity, get a fridge going, uh, make sure their freezers um, can keep all their food that's uh, in, the, in the deep freeze cold. Uh, and then just start, you know, powering cell phones. Cell service is still non-existent down there. Well, it depends on the service provider you have. I get zero bars, but uh, it's Verizon, and, and Verizon just doesn't seem to be as uh, strong in Iowa. Uh, I don't know how it would be in Cedar Rapids. I don't. I haven't been there recently enough to recall. Uh, but I was getting. I get no service there whatsoever. Every once in a while, a text might go through. Uh, their phone service in terms of cell, I think they're on US Cellular, is just starting to kind of come back up, but it's spotty. So um, they're slowly starting to come back. Uh, they're yesterday tried to track down uh, like a tree trimming service because they've got like a, a, a still have that giant tree uh, on top of their roof. And so uh, that's something that they need to fix because uh, it's created like holes in their roof and uh, it's gonna rain in a couple of days. So uh, I don't know that they're gonna be able to get the tree, most likely they're not gonna be able to tree out before the first rain, uh, but hopefully within the next week or so, they'll get that tree taken out of there. And so um, I think we're gonna head back down there again today, um, get them a bigger gas can, um, cause they only have like a two gallon gas can and a one gallon gas can uh, to fill the generator. The generator is a four gallon tank. So like they basically have to go to the gas station every day to keep the electricity running. So we want to get them a bigger gas can so they don't have to, maybe they can go like every other day. Um, and then uh, I'm going to bring, I have a like a wireless uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, like a MiFi kind of thing. Um, and I'm going to bring that down to them. It doesn't really work. I think that one runs on Sprint. It doesn't really work up here in a New Vienna. It didn't work at all in Guttenberg, uh, but maybe it'll work down there. So uh, lots of stuff on their plate. And we're just trying to, you know, help them out any way we can. So that's kind of what's going on. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for for, uh, for following up and asking uh, how they're doing and, and all of your prayers and thoughts. Uh, I definitely appreciate it, so thank you. Uh, that's all I have for today, everybody. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video, and hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs. 
I'll see you guys in the next one. Yo, what's going on?